Hi guys, thanks for tuning into my channel, The Professional PhD. I am Dr. Viola Lanier, and I have a good amount of success being a field application scientist. So, I am trying this video outside today, so please excuse any weird noises, birds chirping, dogs barking, anything out of the norm. But I just wanted to come to you and bring you a video that I was literally asked about in one of the comments. And this video is going to be about how can you impress your interviewers enough to either either land the interview or land the job. The first way to impress interviewers is to show that you have a well-rounded background. You can do this initially on your resume. Your resume is that key initially to showing that you are a well-rounded candidate for this particular job. So, we already know what the field application scientist role, you expect it to at least show that you can or have trained and educated others. But there's other things, such as being able to show that you've been a good writer and contributing to writing technical information or documentation. Showing that you've worked with other departments outside of your specialty. So if you're in immunology, then actually emphasize how you've worked with maybe cardiovascular or oncology departments. And even outside of that realm, maybe you'll talk about how you've collaborated with the clinical research department in some endeavor. That is what they wanna see. They wanna know that you have a cross-functional role and cross-functional experience. On your resume, try to include any experience you've had with working on a sales team or with a sales team. Now, don't get me wrong, the field application scientist role is not a sales role, but what they do want or like to see is that you have worked to a certain degree, maybe with this particular department, or you have been a person who's sold something. The reason why is because in the field application scientist role, you will support the sales team through educational ways. You, you may train them, you may help them to understand more about the application and the real medical or scientific use of that product, process, or platform. And so with that pretty much close work or close connection of, of, of working together, you wanna show that that's something you've done and or something you can do. The second thing you can do to impress the interviewers and land that interview or job is you can use their language. Yes, use the language of the person who is speaking to you. So usually the first call is by a recruiter. Sometimes it's a outside recruiter, so the person does not work with the company or for the company, but they have some type of contract to provide talent to the company. And so if this is that recruiter that's calling you, whether they're internal or external, you wanna speak their language. So what's their language? The job description is their language. They have created the job description based off of what the company said they need, what type of talent they need. So they've worked hard creating this job description. It's not always easy to create a medical and scientific background job description speak their language you can impress them by knowing that them knowing that you are ex, ex, you're you're talking about the things that you have done or can do by using the language that they have included in the job description now one of the things you want to keep in mind is that not every recruiter really understands in depth what the scientific or medical role may involve. So you wanna be careful of how deep you go when you start speaking. Like I said, stay within their language zone. If you can do that, you, you'll impress them because they'll feel like you've considered them as the interviewer, not just this big company that you want the job with, but you've first considered the fact that, yes, you want this job, but let me tell you why and how I can be or am a great talent for this job. So the third thing you can do to impress uh, your interviewer 
and land the next interview and or role. And especially if this is a recruiter who's interviewing you is to ask them, you know, what as the manager or director who is hiring for this role, what have they emphasized as being very important? What are they, what are they really saying? This is non-negotiable. This is something that's very desirable. It's okay to ask them that. You know, what, if, what has the hiring manager emphasized as being really important to them? And then when the recruiter gives you that answer, guess what you do? You reply back by saying how your experience has exactly fulfilled that particular thing. Like if they said, well, the recruiter really wants to make sure this person is a good communicator, then what you would do is you won't just say, well, I'm a good communicator or just leave them to realize that, hey, it's on your resume and shows you're a good communicator. You will say something in regards to that. Well, you know what, I, that's really great to know, you know, because one of the things that I did back in this particular time was give a speech um, to several people back to back. And so I realized how well that I've been able to communicate with others. And I've even gotten feedback saying that I have been a good communicator. Okay. <laughs> so, I mean, it should feel and sound that natural. Know yourself, right? in order to be able to respond and reply to whatever it is that they said the hiring manager finds important. But that will impress them because they feel like, wow, I found someone who can explain or has explained to me how they have already been successful in that area. All right, so the fourth way to impress your interviewer and land that next interview or the job itself relates to if you're talking to, let's say, the hiring manager or director themselves. So now you're at this point of talking to the hiring manager or director, and this is the make it or break it. You will or will not land this role after this interview. A good way to impress them is to ask them something that really would speak to a success, or they can claim a success within their role in leading that field application scientist team. So what do I mean by that? Well, you can either ask them outright, what is their vision for the field application scientist team this year? And how has his team or her team been on track to literally accomplish that vision you can ask them all right since he or she has been there what about his or her team has made him or her proud thus far what does this field application scientist team do really well that they knew that hiring director or manager knew that their team could do and now they've done it you know, you, you gotta play around with that particular question a little bit, and I wish I could tidy it up a little bit more for this video, but point blank, you wanna make it your own. You, you really want to ask this hiring director or manager about the success that they have had with their team and that they're proud of, pretty much, right? And so you wanna word it in a way where they can pretty much perk up and feel like, yeah, well, you know, one of the things that um, my team does is this. So one of the things since I've been here, my team has started doing is that. So you, you, get the, you get the idea. All right, the fifth thing you can do to impress your interviewer and land the next interview and or the role relates to more so if you're now interviewing with people outside of the field application scientist team. So now you're interviewing maybe with the research and development department, or the sales department or marketing, their thought and opinion of you counts heavily as well, just as heavily as the hiring director or the hiring manager or another field application scientist who's been interviewing you. Now, when you are trying to impress them, you, you may feel like, well, I don't know a lot about this role because I'm not even interviewing for this role 
But what you want to do is you want to show them that you're interested in knowing more about their role, not by asking like, what do you do? But like, how does the marketing team work together with the field application scientists in this company? What do you think that the marketing team does really well to support the field application scientist team. How should the field application scientist, or what are your expectations of me if I am the one who's chosen for this job to support your marketing team? You want to really show that your questions are relational, right? How we're gonna work together. What's their vision of them working together with you? If you show that, you're going to impress them because they start to envision this relationship between you and them. Okay, so the last thing that you want to do to land the next interview and or the job is to just be yourself. Be normal. Your normal, authentic self. Relax. I cannot emphasize that enough because I think so many times um, we go into interviews and we try to have this memory bank of information and questions they may ask and questions you want to ask them. And so that's okay to a certain degree, but you want to, you don't want to lose yourself in that process. You don't want to lose the person who can sit back like how I'm discussing this with you versus how I'm discussing this with you. You don't wanna be that way, right? You want to show that you're a person. Now, granted, you may argue with me on the posture base, but when, I, when I'm talking to you like this, I seem much more relaxed. I'm, I'm able to connect with you more if I'm sitting in front of you, versus if I just feel like I'm... Some people may argue that point, but trust me, if you if you allow yourself to just be normal and to connect with the person you're more than likely going to show that you are that well-rounded person that they're looking for in this role listen the field application scientist role is a role that is about connection and working well with others it really is you know when you're teaching and you're training you have to connect well with users when you are teaching and training again and supporting, you want to show that you can connect well with those who are a part of the company. And so it's very important that they see you as a person who can do that. Not just as a person who's ready for this interview and who is able to explain perfectly everything. So instead of thinking about the way to say things, just know that what you're going to say is going to represent and commu represent you and communicate to them um, how you're fit for this role. But you have to feel comfortable in order to feel confident in this. And so if I can tell you anything that is very important is to relax, believe that you are qualified for this role, whether it's with this company or not. And when you believe that, and when you're comfortable with with yourself and in representing that, then you are going to show a level of confidence that it's gonna be hard for them to pass up. All right guys, well I thank you for tuning into this video and I hope that it gave you some good tips in regards to being able to impress your interviewers. You know, a good impression, it can take you very far. And um, I think that if you're confident in the impression that you can make, you're, you're gonna get this role. You are going to get this role. It may be longer than you probably expected, and that's okay. But every time, every interview process that you go through, you're gonna realize you're leaving a better and better impression on others. And so, if you liked this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please let me know any information that you feel like may be helpful for you to know more about in landing this role as the person who asked about you know making a good impression did um, and I'll try to make a video about it um, I feel like there's so many good questions out there that you have that I more than likely may have the answer to and if I don't have the answer I'm sure I have some friends who um, are in the same field that can you know share the answer with me and I'll bring you a video about it so 
I thank you for tuning in. Please make sure you subscribe to my channel to stay connected. And I look forward to connecting with you again soon. Bye.